Hello, hello, Casper from Turtle here. Today is a behind the scene video. It's a video about how I do some styling and how we do styling in Turtle. It's basically a, not a design along, but it's a video where you get to watch me design Turtle using Turtle itself. So uh, let's dig in. So now it's just a matter of finding out what we are going to design. And I think I have a right candidate for just that. It is in one of our panels. It's the data panel, as it's called. It's this thing over here where we list attributes, variables, APIs, and so on. And we have started to sort of make a bit of a spring cleaning, uh, improving some of the layouts and design for the panels over here. Um, I'm in a component right now, a random one used on our current website. It's not going to be used for that much longer. But attributes, that's sort of a part of a component setup. Um, and the thing we are going to design today or improve design wise is this popover panel here where I can name my attribute, I can insert a test value and I can see the current value of this particular attribute. And they, those two might differ because it can be altered uh, once you are running your app in test mode or whatever, or when the user is actually using your, your app. But um, the layout of this is somewhat broken. Um, the styling is a bit off and so on. So let's let's see if we can improve it. And I've actually done more or less the same thing with the variables over here. Not in this particular branch. I need to be on my branch itself. Right now I'm using Turtle as Turtle is intended to. But since we are building Turtle in Turtle, I can also view this very branch, meaning that I can work within this branched version of Turtle just by doing so. So now I'm entering the very branch I'm in, I'm entering this version of Turtle itself. So whenever I'm changing something in Turtle, I can actually see it over here. Yeah, and you saw that right away. My recently changed variable popover menu here now looks a bit like this. And this is the intended design. This is what we are aiming for to do with the attributes over here. Look the difference here, attributes here. Variables here. This is a, a way nicer interface, in in my opinion, at least. Let's uh, let's try and see if we can alter this particular design. So yeah, the first thing is we need to locate the the given component, this component itself. I know this is called a data panel, so I'm searching for a data panel. There you go. This is a data panel. You can see here. This is the very same data panel used in Turtle itself that I'm actually working on in this particular component. And it's even divided into more components. So the first one is called data panel attributes, apparently. Let's go into that one. I just double click and I'm now in the component up here, so to speak. And I need to dig even deeper, as I can see. Yeah, I need to go a layer deeper. Um, because this this section here, let's see, we can test it actually. Go into test mode, click a prop here. No, it doesn't work in this te test mode. But I can test it in Casper test component here. So it looks like this. Let's see if we can improve that a bit. I'm shifting like this all the time because I have a microphone I need to account for. Mm -hmm. oh, wrong component. Data panel, there we go. And attributes panel here. Yeah, and it's located inside these draggable dialogs, which again is a, a component. So I will go into the underlying, the child of this component, data panel attributes editor. There you go. So this looks like this section up here, right? Only missing the background. So on the background is actually taken from the its parent component. Cool. But let's see if we can organize a bit, a, this a bit more. I know for a fact that this is sort of a legacy component for one of the, the first early versions of Turtle. So I know more or less for a fact that this will include some uh, old styling attributes and so on. Yes, I'm using pixels at the moment. Don't, don't judge me. We are in the works where we need to sort of componentize the entire Turtle at some point. But for now, I just uh, insert fixed values in pixels. Don't judge me. It is work in progress. This one that seems right. I'm honest. Know the colors we use in Turtle. 
Mm, just open this CSS preview panel. Yeah, look at this. This is an old sort of legacy thing we used back in the very first version of Tuttle, setting border radius in this case with a JavaScript class. So we will not do that. I'll remove that and insert the proper one up here. Border radius. I know it's six pixels. And the padding inside this uh, input field is going to be eight, not two. Eight pixels. There we go. Mm -hmm. Let's put a background on here so we can see what we are doing just for the time being. There you go. This headline seem a bit too fat. Semi bold. No, that's correct. Perfect. Okay. So let's see. We can narrow this component a bit down. Make it more slim. Oh, we open even. Ah, as a dialog for deleting the attribute itself. Let's keep that as is. Okay, so now I sort of got myself an overview of the particular component. I have a section over here. It's called section. This is not called a section. Maybe it should be called a section. That's a bit cooler. Let's name it section. Section. I'm not naming it. I'm choosing the correct uh, HTML tag called section. Cool, but they are still not um aligned underneath each other they should be so i'll go into this component and i will go for row as you can see it sort of messed up the design but i'm pretty sure it's due to this one not being set to 100 percent there we go yes and same goes for this section oh it's actually 100 percent perfect I would prefer that this this is sort of a preview of the the current value of our our attribute. I would prefer if that was done on a black background. So, oh, one more zero. There we go, and it's black. Correct border radius. No need for this one pixel padding. Overflow. Yeah, we need the overflow set to auto. That's perfectly fine minimum height what did i use for the other component i can't remember two seconds it's called uh, data panel something let's go into the data panel look at the variables this this is the very same setup only for variables what did i set the minimum height ah 128 pixel as a minimum. Let's keep that for the um, the attributes. This is fix width as well. Need to be that's silly. Need to be 100 pixels. Hide auto. Let's remove that as well. This delete button needs to be at the very end. So we need to drag that below the this guy here. Let's set the minimum height to 128. Better, yeah. How about the padding? Or oh, still this old legacy format. We used to use actually in the same way that Tailwind used spacing. They used this sort of non-pixelated uh, value. We used the same back in the days, but now we just defaulted to, to pixels and RAM and, and what whatnot. Go for eight pixels again. Looks better. This headline needs to be, that's fine. Could we maybe add some gap in here, gap eight. Yeah, better. Mm -hmm. Should we keep the same headline here? As so we have a headline for test value and a headline for current value. What did we do in the other component? Yeah, current value as a headline, an initial value. Yeah, it's a bit different for variables. Let's keep this label about this section. What's oh, inside this section? Oh, wow. Uh, need another wrapper here. Section. This shouldn't be called a section. Then should be a div. There we go. I'll pull this one out here. Yes. So we have a label and have a container for this data node component. A rather complex one, by the way. Let's not dig into that. 
Uh, let's add some gap here as well. Eight pixels again. There you go. Beep, beep, beep. Seems about right. There's no background or non-click button. Let's remove that. And an old legacy format here as well. It's just six pixels. There we go. Our state looks nice. Focus state also good. Mm -hmm. Ah, yeah, I'm missing some separators between the, the different sections. I actually have a section for the name of the, the attribute, the test value for the attribute, and then the, the current value. Go away, spell check. Okay, as I recall in the other component for... Mm, do, 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 for variables, we did use some separators, didn't we? Yeah, there are some thin lines underneath neath each section. Let's do the same for the variables. Attributes, sorry. I keep messing those two names up. Variables and attributes. In that case, it means we need to remove the padding from the parent container here. And then go to each of these sections and add padding left and right and underneath and on top. Let's see, this section contains, let's actually drag this one out in its own section. Wrap it, go section. So yeah, we have a section here, section here, section here. That looks a bit cleaner. And the foot as well. Ah, let's not use that name, let's look section. So we have four sections, right? One for the name, test value, current value, and one for the footer of this uh, component, uh, the lead part here. Do we have a fixed height on this one? Why does it look weird? Maybe not. No. Okay, let's start with the first section here. Let's add a border beneath, border below. There we go should be gray 800 as I recall. And some padding. Left and right, top button, there we go. That's our first section done. Oh, why is this spaced like this? There must be some margin somewhere. Do, 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 do. Who put margin on this? No. Is it a gap on Oh yeah, this gap. Gone. Yeah, looks good. Just need some padding left and right. Top button, there we go. And we need to add the border below. You could argue you can could sort of componentify all these sections and so on, but for now we're just doing this for the time being. At some point we're going to do a revamp of the total UI using components everywhere, as you should in your app, by the way. Let's see here, bottom gray 800. There you go, that's our second section. This one needs to have some padding here. Yeah, looks good. And some pad uh, border beneath. Border location, bottom and gray 800 again. So there's something looking funky here in the last section. How's that? Let's look into it. Ah, ain't nobody uses margin anymore. Yeah. So that's pretty decent actually. And without any breaking any things, yeah, it's super cool. Okay, should we maybe try and test this live? As we are on the same branch that we are working on inside Turtle, I can just go ahead and refresh and I can see my results for this particular design component. There we go. So attributes are, maybe let me go inside a test component so I don't mess anything up. 
So the variables, the one that I'm trying to mimic looks like this. Oh yeah, way better already. It's a bit narrow, right? This is way wider than the other one. Let's try and keep the same width. I will locate the, I can't remember the names again. So we go the long way. Variables, data panel, variable editor. Decent name, by the way. Do we set the width here? No, we set the width on its parent, I see it. Yeah, 320 pixels. Let's keep that, we can't remember that because we are old, so we go back and the other one about the uh, attribute, yes, there we go. We are not setting its width here, we are setting the width on its parent again, yeah. There's a panel, attributes, variable dialog, and we are setting a width here. Let's go into a test component so I don't mess stuff up. Casper is my name, by the way, if you were wondering. Uh, oh, same width. Oh, looks way better. Yeah, I could go in and see if I remember all the correct states and so on, but I think you, you get the point now. Yeah. This is how we sort of alter it or improve things in Turtle by actually using Turtle itself in, in this way. It's pretty cool and pretty fun to see your resolve right away. Cool, see you guys. Bye-bye.